from Texas Tech Football Media Day. I'm Casey Cowan alongside Texas Tech head coach Cliff Kingsbury. Coach, a lot of questions have already been asked this offseason. I want to continue to get to know you as a coach. Let's go back to a couple of influences in your coaching life. I want to start with Bill Belichick. Talk to me about some priorities, some things that he impressed upon you that now you exert as a head coach for your program. His, his deal, he was always so thorough in preparation. You know, you had been through every situation you'd see on Sunday probably three times during that week. Mm -hmm. and, um, he'd work on something, and guess what had happened to happen that Sunday, and he just um, had the most prepared teams, one as you know, every defense, every offense inside and out, and so that's something that's always stuck with me. Answer that question about Mike Leach, I'd imagine maybe some similarities from a preparation standpoint. Yeah, yeah, he, he was always more focused on, you know, his team, especially the offense side of the ball. He wasn't worried really about what defense they ran or personnel. He believed that if we executed the plays, um, the best of our ability, nobody could stop it. And so that was a confidence deal that I tried to instill in our, our offense is that, hey, doesn't matter what they're running, who we're playing against, if we handle our business, it'll be hard to stop. You're obviously an offensively oriented head coach. What is Cliff Kingsbury as a defensive coach? What are priorities for you on that side of the football? Yeah, we've got, got to be better in the red zone and, and get more takeaways. You know, that's year one. I wanted to create a lot more turnovers than we did. I knew having young quarterbacks that we'd need to create something and we weren't able to. And so the year two, uh, we're going to have a heavy emphasis on taking the ball away, trying to incorporate some new drills and, and make that a top priority. Talk to us about the uh, lay of the land along the offensive line. I think there's a lot of excitement. It's going to be an improved area, and that can improve, obviously, uh, the whole team. Dominic Robertson's a big part of that. Uh, what's he look like for, to you guys uh, since the time he's arrived on campus? Yeah, all, all indications have been, been good so far. He's worked hard in the weight room and, and looks good. He came in at, at the right weight that we wanted him, and so hopefully that will allow us to move some people around. And, put the best five on the field that we have. And, and there's a bunch of returning starters from that group that they're bigger, stronger, faster, and, and wiser, hopefully, than we had last year. So I expect them to be much improved. Like you said, that makes everything go. We know that the uh, the bowl game obviously had a big impact on the feel of this offseason, probably a lot of confidence and just some excitement in the locker room that maybe you didn't have otherwise. But I ask you, I mean, you have a month to prepare for that game. You know, prior to the actual game, did you already notice some difference or maybe resetting of the minds, re-engaging or refocus? Yeah, I think so. We, we just treated it as a new season, and that's we, we cleared what had happened before and yeah. then, um, just had a new focus, a new energy, and uh, our kids embraced that. And then that's what made it fun that entire month to watch that work ethic pay off in such a big way like it did. Talk to me about your quarterback, Davis Webb. How's he different uh, now than he was a year ago? Just confidence-wise, you know, night and day. He's gotten so many reps now. and understands what we're trying to do. He's got great players around him now. They've all grown together. Um, and it's not easy to do what he did as a true freshman. You know, the stats he had and what he accomplished is, is a big deal, but I expect him to be a much better player this year. Night and day was the phrase that was just used by your offensive coordinator, Eric Morris, and talking about the relationship between quarterback and wide receivers at this point compared to last year. What impact does that actually have on the field when you have, I guess, a synergy there between those two groups? Yeah, it's huge. You're going on two years um, with two springs and two summers of work, and that's a, that's a ton of reps. So now instead of just worrying about what depth they need to get out, they're putting their own nuances on, on things, and they're getting in the zone, and they will be on the same page with throws. And so it's been fun to watch that grow, and um, I, I expect it only to get better as the season goes on. Two years is a term that we're excited about because you're going to have the same defensive coordinator for two straight years, which is probably not exciting in a lot of places, mm -hmm. but it is here. How do you see that continuity already impacting your guys? Just the comfort level with the calls, and instead of just thinking about where they're supposed to be now, they're just reacting, and, and that's the biggest thing. We, we, we feel like we brought in some bodies to help on the defensive line, so if there is an injury, it's not the end of the world this year like it was last. And so uh, we'll see. I, I'm excited. The energy's been great. The effort's been great all summer, and so I'm excited to get them out there and see how much better we've gotten. Non-conference schedule is an interesting one as it kind of feels like it might ramp up in some different ways as it goes along. Central Arkansas and then a late night matchup in El Paso, Arkansas and Lubbock. Different challenges from each of those teams. What do you see when you look at those three games as far as how they could benefit your, your squad? Yeah, the first one, you never know. That, that's always my most stressful one. You're trying to figure out where you're at. And then I, I've played in UTEP a couple of times when I was at University of Houston. That's one of the toughest places you'll ever have to go play, especially yeah. at you know, 10 o'clock at night. Um, and then an SEC opponent coming in, you know what they want to do. They want to ram down your throat. So I, I do think it's a great preseason schedule. It's a, a fun game here uh, with the old Southwest Conference foe, and so I think it, it builds up nicely. Central Arkansas, an FCS opponent. We learned this week that Eastern Washington, another FCS opponent, will be added to the non-conference schedule in 2017. As a head coach, what do you make of FCS games? Do you want to see them continue? Does your team get value from those types of matchups? You know, I, I don't know if we get value, but the university um, you 
know, I think gives value to them, I guess. And so okay. it, it, it helps the entire college football landscape. So if that's how these teams, you know, survive monetarily to help their programs, then I'm all for it. If we ever wanted to eliminate that, then, hey, that's part of the deal. But I, I think you help some of those smaller programs by allowing them to come and, and play and, um, you know, paying them. I was asking Coach Morris about this as well. You guys being Red Raiders, obviously it's been a big part of the storyline, your connection to this program. Uh, you've been a part of game days at, at Houston and uh, Texas A&M. How's it different uh, in your home stadium, the stadium you played in on game day? Are the emotions uh, a little bit, I guess, more difficult to temper? Yeah, it's just, you know, y you have some deja vu moments, I'd say, when you're walking yeah. down that tunnel and, and, and being with those guys. So it just, there's a sense of pride that, you know, it being your school can't be matched anywhere else. You've mentioned uh, turnovers and penalties, something you wanted to improve last year. I know you didn't get to where you wanted to be in that regard. I mean, when you show up on day one at camp, what's on the list under, under those two headlines? How do you impact that as a coach? We're going to try some new things. Um, you know, we'll, we'll see if they work or not. But I think sometimes we talked too much about it last year, and it went the other way. So we'll, we'll try, to, try to some new things. And if we can just get middle of the pack, uh, I think we'll, we'll have a heck of a season. Explain, too, because we talk to listeners every day about how excited you guys are about what, what seems to be better depth, really, in every direction. How do we actually see that show up on game day? How will fans notice that playing out throughout the year? Yeah, the biggest deal is we'll be able to rotate bodies in, um, you know, teams go on 12, 13 play drives instead of trying to keep guys in because we're afraid of what might happen if you, you right. take them out. We'll be able to, to put fresher bodies in and, and should be able to sustain a little bit more in some of those drives. And, and, and that's the biggest deal. There were times last year that we had to keep, you know, starters in 12, 13 plays on the defensive line and that's just not fair to them and, and the result was, was never positive. Right. So hopefully we can put some some guys in that can stop the bleeding if that ever happens. You've mentioned a little bit different uh, variety for the offense, maybe a little bit more down the field, taking the top off of the defense as compared to a year ago. As a play caller, did you feel limited last year, and could that really impact maybe a further opening of the book this year? Yeah, anytime you start two true freshman quarterbacks, you're going to be a little limited, I think. Right. And so we, we toned it down a little bit for those guys, and they had great success. But I, I think it's wide open now, and Davis has, you know, he's mastered it. Um, what we want to do, he knows exactly what I'm trying to get accomplished, and so I, I expect it to really be rolling off so when there's come game one. A couple of fill-in-the-blanks. Uh, Jones Stadium on a Saturday night is? The best. Davis Webb in 2014 is prepared to do? Some big things. <laughs> Let's go down to Lukenbach, Texas with Waylon and Willie and? Uh, the crew. Good enough. The boys. <laughs> It'll work. It's Texas Tech head coach Cliff Kingsbury from Texas Tech Media Day. I'm Casey Cowan for Double T1043 and Double T1043.com.